Hey there, Internet friends. Welcome to another episode of That Nerdy Site Show, a weekly podcast where the team members from That Nerdy Site get together to talk about our lives and all of the nerdy things we love about them. Joining me this week, we have another one-on-one fireside chats episode. Uh, I'm sitting down with Cameron Abbott this week. How are you doing, Cameron? Doing good. What's up? What? I'm oh, sorry. Hey, what's going on, nerds? Time to crack open a cold one. That's, we, we just recorded that D-plus show, and I was surprised you didn't do it on that one. But then I remembered, oh, yeah, that's right. He hasn't done it on D+. Plus. He D- only he keeps it reserved for this or last season of that Ultimate Video Game List show. Yeah, I mean, D-plus is a special show. I'm not going to bring this bit crap into that show. That's fair. What is the, what is the cold one of choice? Is it Dr. Pepper? Indeed. Nice. I know you so well. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, uh, you have, like, three choices when it comes to me, and most of the time it's going to be Dr. Pepper. Yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty much like everywhere in PAX, uh, I was I was hyper aware of where you could and could not get your Dr Pepper fix. <laughs> so based off uh, my in, in, in particular, our hotel vending machines did not have Dr Pepper, so I felt bad for you. Um, you probably if you enjoy what yeah, you, you hear. You probably saw oh, me drink yeah. more Coca Cola that during that trip than any other time you've known me. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Uh, if you enjoy what you hear, please remember to like, subscribe, rate, review the podcast everywhere you can. And if you're feeling extra generous, you can always support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash thatnerdysite. No new pe- patrons to welcome this week, but uh, uh, if you were to join our Patreon, we'd give you a little shout out here. Um, so let us dive right on in, Cameron, because the thing you and I have been playing a crap ton of the last few days is Animal Crossing New Horizons. It's definitely the topic of the show this week. Um, so... Let's let's dive right in. Uh, tell me how's your how's your your island going? How you doing? Hey, so I am in a peculiar spot because uh, I realized I put this out on Twitter the other night, but um, <laughs> you basically restarted because you you didn't like your initial name. Well, yeah, I was like, oh, I'll call it Nook Incorporated, and because Nook Incorporated is like Tom Nook's company, and it'll be funny because yep. it'll be like Nook Incorporated is going to be on everything anyway. So that way, like, island branding fits with the branding on everything else. It'll work great. Like, it's synergy. It's super good. And then um, everybody's throwing out their... During this cutscene, everybody's throwing out their uh, ideas for a name. And Tommy Nook throws out the best name possible. The greatest name of all time. Nuketopia. I mean, it's a name, sure. So good. Nuketopia. And so, like, not only that, but also I realized how little land I gave myself because I didn't realize that you don't get the pole to jump over rivers till, like, you know, later in the game. Oh, yeah. And so my initial offering of, like, home choices of where to put my home were not great. Um, so, like, you know, overall, I think I made a better choice in restarting. Nuketopia is a better island, I think. Um, downside, I have... Well, upside, actually, because I don't like peaches that much. Um, I have apples instead of peaches this time around. Downside, mm-hmm. instead of getting a cool uh, Aloha uh, kind of um, like cool Hawaiian shirt type thing, uh, I got like a weird yellow striped shirt. It's like, you know what? Whatever. Because now I have a uh, Japanese Ohio shirt and cool okay. sunglasses. So I'm good. I um, Yeah, I, I barely paid attention to what I wore the like. The, at the start of the game because I almost immediately went in and and spent half hour designing the that nerdy site logo and so that's what I that is what my character wears now um I've just kind of he's got basically a blue blue hoodie with the uh, the red glasses saying nerdy oh how do you get like the code like the like because I wanted to do that but I also don't have the patience or skill to sit down and draw the that nerdy site logo on a shirt yeah um, uh so I don't think uh, I, I I think you will get codes or some way of sharing them out later, um, but I have not acquired that yet. This is the problem. Greg Miller is tweeting out all this stuff that you can do in Animal Crossing. So yeah, and he's you like could, and he's like you, three weeks in. Well, so yeah, there's there's that, and if you made the design in like the 3ds games, you could get the code from that that you can then read from the app, the Nintendo Switch app. Uh, or the Switch Online app, I guess, um, that would then put it into your game. So, like, you can you can work around that way. Obviously, since I did not have the 3DS games, I wasn't going to go that route. So I just went in and made them. Um, but, yeah, I think eventually, uh, if what I've heard is to be believed, I think eventually, like, the Able Sisters show up on the island and, and 
will give you kind of the same okay, cool. ability um, to to share out that information. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, we we will see. Uh, but yeah, un- until then, uh, I just sat in and 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 so I designed it. I originally designed like the full that nerdy site logo, um, uh, and then in the basic designer, you're designing basically only tank tops, and so like half of it was cut off because it would have gone under the sleeves or whatever. And I didn't know the the shaping of it. Um, so then like by night's end, I basically had, um, used nook miles to get like the pro version of the custom editor, um, which allows you to, to do more in depth, like, Oh, you can do a dress design or you can do a sweater or you can do like a long sleeve shirt or a hoodie or whatever. And so that was where I did the redesign. So now I have, my guy in uh, in in a nice little hoodie, um, enjoying that. But yeah, I'm, I'm paying very little attention to what else I get in the way of clothes. I bought like I bought a tie dye shirt. I saw that, um, but keeping keeping the branding. My my uh, island's name is N- uh, Nerdy Isle. Nice, um, I like that. I was like, I I wish I could have had that Nerdy Isle, um, but alas, ten character limits. There was no good way of doing that. So I just was like, fine, I'll just drop the that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm having like far more fun with it than I thought I would. Um, cause this is a game that I've not played Animal Crossing since the GameCube. Um, and I walked away from like PAX being underwhelmed because of the, the multiplayer version of the demo is, was not great. Um, and I've, I, I feel vindicated in seeing like many people who are playing multiplayer frustrated by it. Um, like when they're trying to play with their families and stuff. Um, so I feel vindicated in my perception of it, but playing it solo or going and visiting like other people's islands and stuff, uh, has been uh, a nice little bit of fun. I think that's the, nice... that's the cool part is like, um, so last night for the first time I had a friend visit my island and he, cause he's like, I'm like, Hey, open up my island, come get apples. And he was the only one that answered in the time frame that I was playing. Yeah. I, uh, I, I would have swung by, but, but by the, I think I was. I think I was watching Gravity Falls or something when when, uh, when you opened it up. So I was like, oh, well, I guess I'll, cause I'll swing by Cam's Island some other time. No, there's not really much to see. I think I have, like, a really cool layout for my island, and I have a really cool spot next to a pond and the river, like, right between the two for my uh, my house now. So mm-hmm. I like where it's at. I'm definitely going to be relocating my house near my waterfall once I uh, can start doing that. I have to wait till the rec center opens up, though. Yeah, I that's that's what I'm sitting at too. Where I'm like, okay, I not knowing like the loop necessarily uh, of things. Um, I put like Nook's cranny farther away from my place that I would like because I what I do a lot of times is I'll like leave my I'll leave stuff in storage in my house and then I'll like make trips back and forth to like offload and sell stuff. Um, and so I want to try and shorten that distance when I get the chance to remove or to to move everything around. Um, but yeah, real good game. I, and I have peaches if you end up needing them. Oh, cool. Like, um, so, so you have apples, I have peaches. Um, I like admittedly at this point, I have all of the fruits because Joey Noel came and visited and gave me pears on day one. Um, uh, like mom in the game sent me oranges. So I have a couple orange trees that are growing. Uh, I couldn't figure out then, how to plant them. So I ate all my cherries. Ah. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I I didn't know how to plant them at first, um, but then I like I put them in storage because I was like, I don't want to get rid of these yet. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I put them in storage, and then once I learned how to plant stuff, um, I uh, uh, I planted them, and I got like cherries and ap- uh, apples. Actually, I got apples from like one of the random islands I visited like the first day. Um, I got cherries from uh, Harve. Uh, and I got coconut and yeah, I think that's, oh, and then like, um, before I found an island that had bamboo, uh, Lauren gave me some bamboo shoots. So I've got, I've got a little bit of everything growing on my island. Very cool. Nice. Um, yeah. my buddy told me when the trees start finishing growing, uh, to come over to his island and pick up more pears and get the coconuts he's growing. So, um, yeah, no, I think it's just like, it's really cool. Uh, I love my little guy. I love, uh. <sighs> I, I originally had um, kind of like the traditional uh, like pocket camp setup of like neighbors with uh, the cat and the dog, the, the tough puppy, not KK. Okay. Um, 
but yeah i mean the from what i understand the like everybody pretty much gets like uh, a a nice um a nice girl and then like a you know a jockey kind of guy character like that's what everybody's getting in the in the default pairing i think but so what what those animals are changes yeah so like i got what do you get mine are uh i got uh goose and renee so like a uh, a bird character and uh, a rhinoceros nice for my defaults and then i today uh, as recording um so sunday my first like new resident moved in uh stitches a uh a very stitched up looking bear type character nice um i have uh the penguin and the pig cool i nice. keep on wanting to call the pig peppa pig but she's not peppa pig but but no, no, that's a that's a different IP. Different IP. Yeah, how far are you in since? Because you you restarted, so did you, like? Are you like a day behind everybody who started playing? Kind of night one. I'm probably about a day and a half behind everybody. Um, okay, which is not bad. Like it's fine. Uh, but also, like I have not been like I've been like I paid off my tent like first day because it's easy to get yeah. those nook miles. Um, and then from there, I've kind of like been saving up i almost have enough nook miles to buy the expanded inventory and now that i have storage in my house i'm going to start storing um things for the museum i'm only one away from unlocking it so okay. and then from there i know that you have to like wait like a week or something before it gets finished getting built uh it's two days two days okay for the museum yeah it's basically like you turn in the last one and like the next day they'll start building it and then the day after it'll open basically okay so i'll just have but to like yeah in stuff. in the in the transition of everything else where it was like oh you like you've met the requirements so the next day like it had been done like a whole bunch of us were going in um because what it's it's like you you give the stuff to tom nook for the first five then once he, once he's got five blathers will move in the next day um and then i immediately gave him like okay here's 15 that you need to open the museum thinking okay he's gonna go in and the museum will open tomorrow it did not so um, I basically had a, a whole bunch of stuff in storage um, uh, that I, at, at some point I was like, all right, I got, I've got too many things. I'm just going to go throw these out here in front of the museum. <laughs> as as per a Kotaku article, a bunch of people were doing that yesterday. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the museum finally opened for me this morning. Um, Nook's Cranny opened yesterday. Uh, and I've, I'm, I'm in my third upgrade, I think. Uh, so you, you upgrade from the tent to the ha house, and then you can basically upgrade, which will make the, the room of the house bigger um, and give you a little bit more storage. And then this morning I got an extra room on the house. Nice. So, yeah, I've got um, – so that is that is the upgrade I'm at right now. Um, I've basically been paying off everything because I um, – like I didn't think I was going to be able to pay off everything in time for um, this morning to get this the latest upgrade, but – I uh, in in my many excursions to random the randomly generated islands, I have gone to the Tarantula Island twice. Um, wow. Okay. Which uh, which which I I call uh, I lovingly call Little Australia, um, and uh, and yeah, the first like the first night I went there um, was like the first time I'd ever encountered tarantulas in the game, <laughs> and I was like, oh god, these things suck. Um, but then somebody, uh, so I'm in like the, I'm in a discord with, uh, with Lauren and, and the, the final fantasy 14 discord that like we were all in, um, there's like an animal crossing channel in there now. Um, and, uh, and being in there and talking with Harv and Lauren and a couple other people, um, I, like I'm learning a whole bunch of new things. Like Harv was like, oh yeah, if you hold the a button while you've got a net, you'll like creep up on people. Uh, I was like, oh, that's a game changer. And so you basically use that with the tarantulas to play like red light green light a little bit like when they they're out there and like their claws are up you shouldn't be moving or they'll come and attack you um but then they'll like like release their defenses and you can like sneak in a step or two and you can kind of creep up on them so yeah like the first night i went to tarantula island i walked away with like nine tarantulas that uh, i was able to sell for eight thousand bells each and then i did that basically again the next day and so i've been rolling in the bells and and able to pay off all my uh my tom nook debt um, sooner than I was anticipating. Nice. So yeah, no. Yeah, it's been fun. I'm I'm really like I'm I'm really enjoying it. I I don't 
like i i love the the nook miles and nook miles plus um like because it, it constantly gives me like a new thing to to go towards and go after um uh at in your point in the game have you been tasked with um building like three houses or or setting up three plots of land yet no i've not done that yet okay um so that'll be something like coming up i think you i think you get that because you uh i think you get that like when you've built nook's cranny uh or when nook's cranny opens i think is when you'll get that kind of mission from tom Mm -hmm. um and uh and that one's like you basically have to plot the three sets of stuff and then each each of those um units um before somebody will move into them you have to build like six different pieces of furniture for them um three indoor and three outdoor um and so like i had a I, like i had been stockpiling enough resources that i was able to knock those out all pretty quickly um so that was why my first person was able to move in today so yeah it's a it's a fun time just a very chill game that i'm i'm very much enjoying um and like uh, i i'm especially enjoying playing it with other people and being in in like a discord where i can like just chat with people about what their experiences are and and we're like we're sharing each other's milestones and celebrating when somebody's paid off you know their their loan or something like that it's been uh been nice because i definitely would not play it like that otherwise um but i've, I've been like um, upping my uh, my switch friends to to hop into people's islands i look forward to visiting or having you over to my island at some point uh cam to come i don't know we i don't know if i'll uh i'll maybe i'll craft a pan flute that i got a recipe for and i'll just like blow it at you just like um everybody's playing their ocarinas or their tambourines um, do so and, and give do me a, a concert fun video yeah exactly um so yeah what uh uh um, have you been doing any of the like random mile excursions? No, because that's uh, taking up Nook Miles, and I'm saving my Nook Miles. Okay, why? Like, what are you saving them for, though? Uh, inventory upgrades. Okay, I mean, y- y- yeah, okay, that's fair. I like, I, I'm getting so many that spending two thousand Nook Miles to go to the to another island, and just like, like that was how I was able to get a crap ton of iron nuggets um on like day one or whatever was because i just went there and and bashed the rocks uh a ton um i should know i did not know that that's how you um got iron nuggets so i had no iron for a very long time Mm. oh yeah it's uh have you have you learned the um the rock trick yeah i have you uh, can where you dig a hole behind you and around you so you don't get moved yeah yep okay and yeah you can bash it up to eight times um Okay, because yeah, so many of these things. It's like, oh, like longtime Animal Crossing fans take it or like just know this stuff, and I'm like, oh, coming into it, I did not know that, and I did not know, like I I was under the impression that the rocks respawned. Um, so I went through and I did the whole thing where like, um, I I got a handful of items, probably wasn't getting eight out the out the gate, but then it was like, oh yeah, and if you eat a piece of fruit, um, it'll you know make you super strong, and so you can like break a rock. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll do that to get, like, one more thing, thinking that, like, the rocks would be, like, would respawn the next day or something like that. They did not. <laughs> um, or, like, they do, but they respawn in, like, other parts of the island. Um, so I was like, well, crap. So it was, I, I basically was, f- I forced myself to have to go to um, to the islands to try and get more iron, iron nuggets. Um, but in doing so, yeah, I was getting plenty other resources um i could go like cut trees down there and not feel bad about like messing my island up and getting and get the the nook miles plus things so um so yeah i I, like i've not at all run at the run the risk of running out of nook miles so um might be worth the investment of buying it plus you get he gives you one nook miles ticket for free i do have that Um, i've been saving it so yeah you should be able to just use that to go go see what it what the experience is like at least i've wanted to upgrade Uh, my inventory before i go so i can empty it out except for my tools okay and then yeah um, that's fair and then also have it on the tool i need to get the tool chain as well yeah um well cool any um any other thoughts on animal crossing you said you had a a friend visit visit you or did you visit them uh they visited me okay it was super cool i was surprised at how easy it was and how well it worked 
And yep. um, I liked it a lot. I, I think that there is uh, something very cool about... There's just really something nice about this game. It's very comfy. Mm-hmm. Um, in a time where there's not a lot of comfort right now, this game is very comfy. And I yeah. feel like that catharsis is resonating with people in a very yeah. good way. So Yeah, it was very much, uh, obviously, like everybody kind of knew going into it, but it was like, this is the game we need for the state of the world right now. <laughs> Um, Speaking of which, should we uh, mention yeah. that at all? Like, we're in a pandemic right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, I think is... I think it's like, especially if people are listening to this, like, I don't know. I don't know why anybody would be listening to this much later. You're, you're coming back to our thoughts on Animal Crossing New Horizon years later. Yeah, this is this is in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. Yeah, where like, um, people are being told to self-quarantine. Mm-hmm. Also, can we... Uh, yeah, can, I, I started yeah. working from home this last week, so... <clears throat> So did I, um, even though up until Wednesday, my uh, my company did not have a work-from-home program. Oh, yeah, mine mine didn't really either. <laughs> yep, uh, that was uh, quickly changed, and now I have another desk set up in my, in my room with uh, my workstation at it. So, like, the actual station from work. They sent us home with, like, the PC and two oh. monitors and everything. Wow, that's way more than we got. Like, because uh, we had, like the ability to work from home we just didn't have it like as a as a wide-ranging thing uh at my job um and so they started doing it in phases basically this week where it was like okay starting on wednesday some people could work from home and then thursday more and then i think friday by the the, basically i got to the point where they were trying to not have 10 people in the office um to to kind of fit by those guidelines um and so my, for for me, my work from home is very much like it was when we were in Boston, and I was like hopping online and checking into uh, to stuff, um, just doing that more, like uh, all all encompassing. But yeah, some people like didn't have laptops or something like that, so they had to they they my office did have like a handful that they could basically check out to people for use. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the the bigger thing is like um, I, I work for a symphony we've had to cancel a lot of our shows. Yeah. So a lot of people are calling our box office and our box office basically needed to become a remote box office. So they had to like take phones to, and, and, and the phones need a router. And a lot of our box office people do not have ra- routers of their <laughs> own to work off of. So, um, so that was where I think some of the, the, the bigger struggles, um, have been trying to work around, but yeah, it's a it's a very different time for for all involved, and and so a game like Animal Crossing uh, coming in here, I I tweeted this out the other day, but yeah, basically like on on Saturday, Joey Noel swung by my island and and gave me a uh or yeah, she gave me a handful of pears, um, and I gave her some peaches in exchange because I knew that was one of the things she'd been you know missing in her uh, her review time. Um, and so she gave me like 10 pairs. Um, I planted a couple and I basically threw the rest in storage. Um, mm-hmm. and then later that day, um, uh, when like Lauren and Harv started opening up their islands, I went and visited kind of each of them and just dropped off a couple, um, on each of their islands and, and traded. And it was just kind of like, like, um, uh, uh, Joey had given me this gift that I then paid forward to other friends in our little community. Um, and so, yeah, now that I have, um, basically trees of each that'll start like blossoming with each of the fruits in the next couple of days or whatever. Um, I look very much forward to kind of like opening up my doors to anybody to come, uh, come, come take whatever fruit you need to complete your collection. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's, uh, it's a very, very heartwarming, um, and just like all around good natured game, um, that is very much what I think people need to kind of, and it and allows us to connect through something that we love doing, um, despite us not being able to connect, you know, physically in person these days right yeah. now. I agree. I think that it's funny because I think there it was such a, I loved the memes and stuff coming out because Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing were coming out the same day. And so yeah. like, people were doing a ton of memes where basically because people are going to be buying both. And so it's like, you know, it's so cool to see the um, internet's creativity, like, basically make, like, Doom Guy and Isabel best friends. Yeah. Did you see the um, the IGN, um, like, cover art that they ha- had? Um, 
because it was basically like they had like the review for each of those games and then they had like wiki guides for each of them and it was very much like it was so it was like four thumbnails of crossover art where it was nice. you know Annabelle shooting um a caco demon or something like that for doom review or doom tips or something like that and then it was doom guy you know watering flowers or something in the animal crossing you know 10 things you need to know every day or something like that it was so um and it was all um uh art done in the same kind of style and stuff yeah just ign very very much leaning into um into the memes and and whatnot um and yeah it was um very good uh and speaking of um like doom eternal is the other thing i have to kind of like add to the conversation today because i've been taking the occasional breaks from uh from animal crossing animal crossing has definitely eaten up the bulk of my time this weekend um but uh doom eternal i've spent a little bit of time I, i've played through the first couple levels of and it just feels good to be back in doom um it is fast-paced action i remember when doom 2016 came out my like takeaway was first person shooters should never feel slower than this uh, mm-hmm. like it like this should be the new baseline for how good this feels um and hopping in to like the first tutorial level kind of thing i was like yep it's i'm back i'm running around i'm i'm constantly having to keep moving um there is no like it, it, it is not a cover shooter in any stretch um it is run and gun is the way to survive mm-hmm. um uh and there's uh, there's like it's a lot has been talked about kind of in the uh, in the lead up to it in preview coverage and stuff but yeah there's basically like three there like you've got ammo that you need to manage you've got shields that you need to manage and you've got health that you need to manage and you basically have to um, glory kill something for health to drop you have to chainsaw an enemy um, which is basically like your not even like your melee but it is it's like the square button basically on on playstation um will chainsaw an enemy uh and they'll explode in ammo um and then uh you eventually get um basically like a flamethrower attachment to your your armor or something that setting our enemies on fire will have them drop armor um <laughs> That's so you basically so good. You're, you're having yeah, you're having to basically manage all three of those things and kind of keep an eye on like, oh, I'm low on health, so I need to find somebody I can glory kill. Or, oh, this weapon is, is low on ammo, I can either switch guns to a gun that has more ammo, or I can chainsaw an enemy. Um, and then, like, you have to basically wait until the, the chainsaw refuels either, I think, it's one, like, I'm not quite sure, because I'm like... I've, it's definitely refilled somehow bef- without me going and getting like tanks on the ground and pickups mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, uh, and then, uh, and then your flamethrower is basically on a timer as well. Um, and you can get, you know, upgrades, um, that'll kind of reduce the, the cooldown time for some of those things. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just a ton of fun. Um, the, they've added some, some extra platforming in this. Like you basically start out with a double jump this time and very quickly, they have you like climbing on walls and dashing through the air, and so you good. can, okay. and you can like, you can dash through the air into a pickup that will like refill your dash meter, a la like Celeste. It's basically three D Celeste at, oh <laughs> at some points in this game, um, and uh, and so it makes for like fun diversity in not only in like the platforming challenges that they they give you, um, but also just like using those kinds of things in a combat arena help with the mobility and you being able to get like get around the enemies um in a way that you can kind of reach their weak points or something like that so it's it's incredibly hectic incredibly chaotic and fast-paced but in in all sorts of fun ways and it's so weird going between animal crossing and doom (laughs) eternal it is it is night and day and that's why that's like one of the reasons i think the internet kind of like rallied around those two games having the same release date is like there is a small Venn diagram of people like me that are playing both of them, but so many people that like are in it for Doom Eternal are never going to touch Animal Crossing, and so many people that are in Animal Crossing that are never going to touch Doom Eternal, and so like the fact that those communities could like enjoy from the outside looking in, and admittedly, like until until like my friend's community basically like really was rallying around Animal Crossing. I wasn't going to pick up Animal Crossing. I didn't buy, I didn't order Animal Crossing until like 
a week before it came out. Um, and even then, like, I was going to get it through Best Buy and then all of the, like, quarantining and, and self, uh, self-isolation self stuff came out. And so I was like, okay, well, I, like, I could do what I normally do. I, I'm sure I could go into Best Buy and pick it up and not have any problems, but also... I can just buy it digitally (laughs) and I'll, and it, and it will be here and I will be able to play it the night it comes out that Thursday night. I'll get, you know, get a a night's worth of playing it in before, uh, before Friday and all that stuff. And, uh, and so like I, I did that and, and have been having a great time with it. Um, I, I'm very surprised like that animal crossing is what has taken so much of my time, given that like doom eternal was the one I was so much more excited about, um, you know, a week ago even. Um, but uh, but yeah, like, like I've got so many friends that are, that hopped into Animal Crossing and are playing it that, that, uh, the FOMO was real. Um, and I didn't want to miss out on it. Um, but so, Doom Eternal, yeah, I've never, also yeah. real good. So I've never actually played an Animal Crossing game before. I probably should have prefaced that. Uh-huh. Um, outside of like, like I, I know about Animal Crossing because Animal Crossing became such a sensation on the internet. Yeah. Um, that I became very familiar with like the concept of it. Doom Eternal is a game I haven't actually been able to pick it up. There's been, anyway. the The point is, is I haven't picked it up yet, um, and that's okay, because I know it's going to be waiting for me when I'm done with Animal Crossing. So yeah, as will Final Fantasy VII remake and all sorts of <laughs> all sorts of other stuff. I'm just I, like I'm really enjoying, uh, especially hopping in and playing it like alongside friends and and like seeing people on Twitter or or in discords and stuff like share oh here's how I did this or here's here's like mm-hmm. a secret that I discovered um like even even the um and it's so like I you you mentioned you have never played an Animal Crossing game before this I did I played the GameCube one but like I remember so little of it the thing I remember most about the GameCube version is that it had little items that were Nintendos that you could basically play ROM NES games in. Um, so I remember like loving that little aspect of it, um, and doing almost nothing else, um, in, in the way of like the larger scope of the game. So, uh, so yeah, playing, um, playing this with friends, um, and, uh, like I'm, I'm digging into like here are you know the ten things you didn't or like Animal Crossing doesn't tell you kind of videos, mm-hmm. um, so that I can try and get a leg up and try and you know min max how much bells <laughs> I'm bringing in daily and all that all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, so yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun, um, but sharing those ideas and those those things with other people like um, one of the ones we were chatting about is. Um, you can plant money trees and stuff and how do they work? Oh, um, like, cause I went to like Harv's Island and basically he had like, I, I dug up a, a hole and he had like a thousand bells, uh, like a bag of a thousand bells in there. And I was like, I don't think that's going to do anything. Um, and, and sure <laughs> enough, like I, I tracked it down. It's like, no, you can only plant like bells in like the glowy spot that you get like once a day, basically. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so so every day there will be a spot on your island once you've got a shovel that you can dig up, um, and it'll be money. And that hole will stay, like, shiny, and so if you put that money back into that hole, you're basically, you'll plant it, and it'll, like, after a few days grow into a tree, that'll drop three bags instead of the the one that you, you picked up. So basically it's like, hey, if you can wait a couple days, this will triple your investment. You don't have to put, like, it'll usually be like, oh, here's a thousand bells that you'll dig out of the hole. You can put a 10,000 bell sack in there and it'll give you 30,000 bells. Um, but if you just dig, like, a hole and put the money and bury the, you're just going to end up not getting anything from it. <laughs> so, so, uh, like, sharing that with the, the rest of the people in the Discord so that nobody was just, like, burying their money <laughs> and wasn't going to get any kind of return on it. Um, it's interesting. Even today, as we're recording, is the day that turnips started showing up on the island, um, feeding into the turnip stock market, S-T-A-L-K, um, where, like, Timmy and Tommy will, throughout the rest of the week, the price of turnips will fluctuate, so you can buy, you know, whatever they were at on your island today, and, um, and it wasn't until like talking in the discord group and we started sharing like what prices were that I was like, Oh, I've got a bad price for turnips this week. So maybe I shouldn't invest too much in them in case, 
you know, the, the sell prices throughout the next week are low. Um, yeah. Especially that in, in juxtaposition with the, the real stock market just crashing and burning over the last week uh, or two is like, oh, oh gosh, yeah, yeah, this is, this is a little too real, <laughs> Animal Crossing. This is a little too real. Yeah. But oh, gosh, still, yeah. like getting getting to learn that alongside people who uh, have like a wide variety of people who have played the game um, before or not, um, it's been a lot of fun, uh, and I look forward to continuing to see like more little secrets or just sharing cool things that that people are crafting. Um, I started getting today the ability to customize items, so I can you know build a, a bookshelf and then I can um, customize it to change color and stuff. Um, so again, like I, I built and customized my bed so that my bed sheet now is the That Nerdy Site logo. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I was just like, yeah, I'm going to sleep in That Nerdy Site um, uh, like a comforter. Absolutely, I am. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. I'm like liking Animal Crossing. Doom Eternal, also great, um, but for a wide variety of different reasons. And, and I certainly have not played enough of Doom Eternal, especially hearing people say it's like 15 to 20 hour campaign. I've played the first two levels, um, and I've really enjoyed that. Like, um, they introduced in this one because the levels are are significantly larger, I think, than the first game. Um, near the end of every level, you get the ability to fast travel back through the level, um, so you can go back and like pick up any collectibles you might have missed or something like that. You can try and like seek it out before you finish the mission. Um, so that's that's been a a nice little thing that helps me like 100% the level so I don't have to go back and like fully replay them all through again a second time so um, yeah really enjoying Doom Eternal really enjoying Animal Crossing for wildly different reasons and I look forward to spending more time with both here in the weeks to come um, uh, so Cameron let me throw it over to you because uh, uh, where I've been playing Doom Eternal you've been playing some Call of Duty Warzone so tell me about Call of Duty Warzone I know almost nothing about it outside of like the fact that um, it's Call of Duty's free version of the Battle Royale. It's free, and on top of that, it's also cross-play. So oh. regardless of what system you're on, you can or PC, you can play together. Uh, it is actually a lot of fun. I was not sure how I felt about it initially, because Call of Duty is, like, the setup of it is almost borderline archaic at this point when it comes to the innovation that's gone through first-person shooters. Um the fact that, like, honestly, I could care less what my, like, perks are because they're pointless. They're so watered down to prevent any actual, like, strategic edge over anybody. It doesn't really matter. Um, most of the perks actually don't even work in Warzone. Um, and the way that they, like... The one thing I will say that frustrates me is that you have to spend time with a gun to unlock its, like, scopes and stuff. So in other games when you are going through um depending on what you get like what battle royale you're familiar with um sites in apex and PUBG are a big deal like which sites are you going to pick up what level sites are they uh fortnite less so um because fortnite scales gun levels based off of the gun themselves not necessarily attachments um also because it's third person not first person it doesn't really impact it that much uh i would also go as far as to say that um what Call of Duty has going for it is that it's it's newer. It is it is fun. Like, there is something fun to it. Um, I think one of the most brilliant things they do is that it's called the Gulag, which is essentially when you die the first time, you are sent to a Gulag, and which is, you know, just like a prison area. And you're scheduled to fight somebody one-on-one -on -one using a randomized set of weapons and tools. And if you kill that person, you're able to go back. So, even if, like, you get a squad member that's downed and killed, if they can make it themselves go back through the gulag, they can drop back into the game. That's probably hmm. the most interesting thing that they're doing that's different. Um, okay. So, instead of worrying about, like, drop ships, you have to, like, you have to work, like um, with Apex, where you have, like, drop ships that can bring in, like, revive your teammates and bring them back. Uh, in this case, it would be you want your teammate to survive the gulag, and then they'll drop back in. So it's a fascinating like aspect to the game that makes it different. Um, one thing I will say is that I appreciate the um, 
like the breadth of weapon variety that they have. Uh, I will say that's probably one thing they have on top, like against other battle royales, is just kind of like the like vast differences between weapons. Like they do have um, instead of it breaking down, like Apex breaks things down based off of the ammo types. So recently Apex introduced a uh, sniper ammo, so they took out some uh, weapons based off of uh, like that are either heavy weapons or like heavy weapons or whatnot. And they've transitioned them over to being just sniper guns. And they've been able to introduce a bunch of different guns because of that. Um, like the single shot sniper rifle as well as uh, transitioning some electric weapons into sniper rifles as well. So diversifies the ammo type, diversifies the gun lineup. Call of Duty's already doing that, but also instead of like breaking down and keeping ammo types separate, uh, small, small firearm ammo and then large firearm ammo are kept separate instead. It's, really, to get out of the minutia of, like, the differences that Call of Duty Warzone has with others, um, I don't know how long it's going to last. We'll see. Uh, you know, I was somebody who really thought that the early gameplay for Fortnite was so bad that I don't understand why anybody would keep playing it, but clearly I was wrong because they improved it to the point where it was satisfactory to people. Still not satisfactory to me, but I, you know, regardless of that aspect to it, I think Call of Duty Warzone might have a shot because Call of Duty is so synonymous with kind of like the baseline of where a first-person shooter should be. Like, you should never... Your first-person shooter should never be worse than Call of Duty. It just should not be worse than Call of Duty. Call of Duty should be the ba like the, the very bottom line of how bad a first-person game can be because Call of Duty is generic. It's very... And I think that's probably the biggest thing I have against it is that... Um, when PUBG is more colorful than your game, that says a lot about <laughs> your battle royale. But uh, yeah, outside of that, like I'm not like I'm not incredibly impressed. It's a fun game. I don't know if it'll be a flash in the pan or not, but it's fun. Okay. Also, yeah, I haven't I, played I... a Call of Duty game in like Black Ops Two was the last one I played. Okay, so I was gonna I was gonna leave it. And just be like, whatever, like, Cam could be a Call of Duty hater. But I don't think you get to call something generic if you haven't played it in the last, like, five or six installments. Because <laughs> you haven't been keeping up. Who knows if it's if it's staying generic. I can't speak to it one way or the other, because I've only played Infinite Warfare and then the Modern Warfare remaster that came out, came out alongside it. Um, but, like, when it came out, I was like, okay, I get why Call of Duty sells millions of copies every year. is because the gameplay is solid be it generic or not i don't i i can't speak to that because i don't play enough other first person shooters but like it it is the dominant like uh, franchise um in all of gaming for a reason and i think it is um hmm. is it anymore um, though i mean if you take out like the only like the the uh matt piscatella from npd put up like here are the top selling games of every generation of of each of the systems uh, this generation and like the only two games that that removed call of duty from like the top of the running were grand theft auto 5 and red dead redemption 2 um okay yeah that's that would be other, the, that was the, the other seven games in the top 10 or whatever seven or eight games in the top 10 are call of duty on every system except switch um, so it, yeah, on, on PlayStation and Xbox, Call of Duty makes up seventy to eighty percent of the top ten games. Um, I think on PlayStation, Spider Man's like the first um, like Sony exclusive that you get in the in the mix there. I mean, that's um, fair. Like the thing is, also I would compare it to like um, I don't. Know, I think it's like I always call Call of Duty the Madden of first person shooters. I mean, yeah, it's but and it's not like, a bad thing. I'm not here's the thing. I'm not hating yeah. on Call of Duty. Like, it's not a bad thing. I'm enjoying my time with Warzone, but also at the same time, if you were to ask me, Cameron, uh, like, what battle royale game is like the most interesting? I would not say Warzone. What would you say, Apex? Apex is probably the most interesting, based off of, like the variety that you get out of that game. Um. Okay. Mm, I mean, yeah, like, yeah. I, I don't think, like, I think what Call of Duty is probably going for is a a Call of Duty level 
uh, of uh, of Battle Royale, basically. Yeah, sure. It's, I think it's what they started with, or what they attempted with Blackout, um, but they didn't get the traction because they locked it behind the $60 purchase price. Um, so with Warzone dropping, and I, I feel like they even, I mean, at least since I don't follow the scene, it seems like they were trying to recapture the Apex, like, drop it out of nowhere magic. Um, uh, and yeah, it, like, as, as an outsider looking in, it's like, okay, I know if I'm looking at, at Warzone, it's gonna, it's gonna have, you know, Call of Duty polish. Yeah, for sure. Um, like, the quality of Call of Duty, like, when I said baseline, I really mean, like, you want your game to be as, like, your first person shooter to be at least as solid as Call of Duty. To then take it outside of that to be more creative and kind of take it outside of that more generic kind of as like aesthetic that's one thing but you want mm-hmm. your game your baseline to be because if your game's not if your first person shooters not at least as good as call of duty not as solid as call of duty you're not going to really penetrate the market um i mean yeah and that's and the i guess the the argument i would make against that is that um it's easier for call of duty to have that level of quality because of the resources that are being put behind Call I mean, that's Duty. true. Whereas, like, somebody new coming uh, um, into the scene, I mean, like, I, I would say, um, uh, kind of going along the Apex Legends line, like, Respawn's one of the few other people that have been able to do it to that level. Um, uh, one of the other few other studios that have been able to make a solid, comparable um, first-person shooter. Because, um, like, the... I, like I'll I'll say it, like the shooting in in Destiny is, doesn't feel as good as Call of Duty. The shooting in in um, Borderlands doesn't feel as good. But they have other things going for them that help. Kind of like if I would say like first person military shooter, yeah, like Call of Duty has to be or is and 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 you would have to do something to set it apart to to try and take Call of Duty's lunch. But and that's what Borderlands does. So that's what Destiny does um, with their looter shooter mechanics. For sure. And that's the thing. I think that one thing I will say is that when you do pick up weapons in um, in Call of Duty Warzone, as they scale up from like the basic to green to blue to uh, purple, because they do follow that scheme. But if I see a purple gun, man, I'm dropping stuff for that purple gun. Because that purple mm-hmm. gun's going to have sights. It's going to have like, there's better, it's, it's a better gun. And I think that's something Warzone does that I think might actually set it apart as being a quote unquote, like, when you're doing that in a kind of like a Fortnite scheme to actually make the difference, not just like, oh, it's purple, so it's better. It's purple, so its sights are going to be better. It's going to have like, purple guns oftentimes have hybrid sights. So you can swap when you're doing the single shot versus the, you know, uh, automatic, like full auto or semi-auto. Um, you're doing mm-hmm. single shot. You have like a, like a, a pretty decent scope on it to get, to like hit your target with the single shot. I've loved that. Um, one thing they're doing that I think I like I wish Apex would go to start doing, even though it's Apex bread and butter and what separates it from the others, is the solo mode. The solo mode in Warzone's really good. Especially when you're doing gulag and stuff. Like when you bring in the aspect of gulag, which I think is a really brilliant mechanic, where you, you earn your way back into the game. You're not relying on your teammates to bring you back into the game. You're earning your way back to the game. And I think there's an aspect of like tension as well as like, uh, yeah, if like if I, here's the thing, if I don't make it back into the game because I was in the gulag, oftentimes it's because the person outplayed me, like mm-hmm. pure and simple. The person outplayed me. Like I love that. I love that aspect of it. Um, it makes it reminds me. It they brought in the aspect of duels from Call of Duty's multiplayer mode, and brought it into like an actual like aesthetic that you can tie into the rest of the battle royale mode. Like it's a solid battle royale. I don't know if it's, but like I said earlier, I don't know if it's interesting enough to, to like take top dog status away from like Fortnite. Or Apex. Yeah, it's, uh, when when you kind of uh, lamented Fortnite's gameplay, I was like, yeah, it's not trying to get by on its gameplay; it's trying to get by on all of the flashy colors and its accessibility to people. Like uh, anybody can hop in. I'm mean, not anybody can hop in, but like people can hop into Fortnite, and yeah, they might be bad, but they can get better. And if they if they learn the gameplay of that, the gameplay is good enough. But the the world around Fortnite certainly seems to be more what Fortnite is about than the gameplay. 
um uh and the gameplay is ever evolving ever changing as well yeah um oh i will say though so. that like when they did Fortnite chapter two brilliant like i like even yeah. somebody who does not like Fortnite, like i still thought man i'm not gonna go back and play it but like the idea of the world collapsing and like what what they're gonna do next of Fortnite two and Fortnite chapter two like that whole shtick was great like yep. that's solid that's a solid decision to make on that like good for you guys um, I don't know if, like, there's a certain level of creativity that Fortnite has, that Apex has, that even, like, PUBG kind of has. PUBG is probably, like, up until Call of Duty Warzone came out, I would say that, um, or even Black, well, Call of Duty Blackout came out. I would say that, like, PUBG, like, what it's based off of is very much, like, open, ex- like, not a open accessibility because it does have, like, a 20 or $30 price tag to it, but the... There's something about PUBG that is very much, like, dilapidated, felt more real, quote-unquote, like, guns felt like you can... There's a difference between each... the sound each gun makes in PUBG versus the more general sounding stuff that you get from other games. Like, because it's built off of an Arma 2 mod. Like, it's... the pedigree of PUBG and what it does is noted and documented. Go look it up if you don't know and you want to know. Um, You're not going to hear anything new here from me. Uh, but Call of Duty, I think, is the only other game that can do that. I will say, um, the market buying mechanic, because they're market spots, so the cash mechanic actually on Warzone is really cool. Um, because when you kill people, you pick up cash that they had on them, and you can spend it for, like, instead of being like, oh, I need to kill four people to get my, uh, my UAV drone, instead it's like, or I can, like, scavenge, scavenge enough cash around or complete enough, like, mission-based bounties around to have enough cash to buy that UAV drone. And, like, I've gotten into, like, the top five of a solo match because I was right by one, so I launched my UAV, ran to the market, bought a UAV real quick, then started booking it, and was, like, able to, like, use that UAV later on in the top ten round to then um, get to the top five. Like, there is that level of cool adaptability to that with the marketplace that they offer. Granted, the marketplace is a single station that's very much out in the open a lot of the time. So, like, you're taking mm. a risk. So yeah. there's that aspect to it as well. Um, Dropships also are a thing. Um, there's a lot of actually, like, little unique things that they do that's very not typical Call of Duty that others don't do or do in a different variation of that does make it more unique, but it never quite leaves that level of call of duty but maybe you know, and here's the thing maybe it doesn't have to yeah i mean it's like i think call of duty helps get it by on its name fortnite got by on its like style and and uh, over necessarily the substance maybe apex came in as like a like shot nobody was expecting um and had the pedigree of like the titanfall games to back it up so like Call of Duty is basically trying to one up what Apex was do- doing. I think. I think you're still going to have very different audiences between Fortnite and and Call of Duty. But I wouldn't be surprised if you know the the people who have maybe gotten a little tired of Fortnite now and want to go back to um, your Call of Duty games uh, dive into Blackout, but or Warzone. Um, but yeah, I I certainly I, I my my battle royale time came and went with like my summer of overwatch a couple years ago i don't need to hop back into it i'm good <laughs> um i'm gonna keep you know building up my 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 island in animal crossing or destroy some demons uh huh do you mean fortnite yeah I, you I, said overwatch I, I, uh yeah sorry i i was looking at the doc where overwatch league is the next thing you <laughs> yeah, have to talk about sorry. so yes, I yes, like, yes I sorry i spent like, i spent a summer of... playing yeah. fortnite yeah and I don't need to go back to it. Yeah, I was about um, to say, when was the summer of Overwatch, and how did I miss that? That's incredible. Yeah, no, I played like two or three matches of Overwatch. Uh, I, I played like two nights of Overwatch, and then came back to it for the Irrational Passions Extra Life stream that one year where we played against OK Beast and won. And dominated. Just just throwing that out there. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I do not go back to Overwatch. But speaking of Overwatch, tell us what, what's going on with the Overwatch League these days, Cameron. Well, it's actually first piece of news about Overwatch. New Hero announced and is on the PTR realm right now. Yep. Echo, she was in the uh, trailer that showed off Ash um, and the Gunlock gang and kind of gave uh, McCree his uh, 
like ex partner, possible ex romance, etc. thing. Um, Ash has been around for more than a year now because um, she was at, she was announced at BlizzCon twenty eighteen. So, you know that was a thing. Um, BlizzCon twenty twenty came around. There was no Overwatch announcement for a new hero. Echo twenty nineteen twenty nineteen yeah. Ec- this year, um, Echo came out. She is. The character introduced well, at the very. To be end. fair, there was an Overwatch two announcement, so so I think fair. I think that trumped a character announcement. And that's totally fair. I'm not I'm not saying it doesn't. It definitely does. But um, I also wrote an article about the bribery of BlizzCon 2019. Anyway, uh, about how Overwatch two and Diablo four and all of that were basically done to try to pull people's gaze away from what Blizzard and Activision had made a policy of. Anyway. I digress. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, they were absolutely trying to get uh, Hong Kong, free Hong Kong is, out of the news as much as possible with, <laughs> with like, their bum rush of those announcements. Yeah, you want to talk about, like, there's no way I'm ever going to get a job at Blizzard if I ever tried to apply for one. My name is tied to an article where I put the director of the studio <laughs> head on, like, a fat, like, money goblin. <laughs> like, I'm never getting a job there if I ever wanted yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend applying. No, I wouldn't want to apply anyway. Like, screw them. Um, free Hong Kong. <laughs> Duh. Uh, no, so, um, yeah, Overwatch. Uh, Echo, she was debuted in the end of that trailer um, and in 2018. And they're like, yeah, she's going to be a hero. For a long time, there's been theory that she's going to be a support hero, like a new healer. Um, turns out she's actually a DPS hero. Not only is she a DPS hero, she's kind of nasty. Uh, she has a, f- like, flight ability that's kind of a hybrid between Farah and, um, Mercy, where she has initial boost that Farah has, but it's not a sustained, and there's not the uh, additional way of staying in the air that Farah has. Farah is the, uh, rocket queen. She's the, you know, jetpack rocket launcher. Uh, She's one of the few people I, I, I mained as. There you go. Uh, Mercy, of course, is the, uh, st- like, OG standard healer. Um, alongside Lucio, uh, and she has a glide mechanic, so she can glide over to people. Um, Echo has a hybrid of that as far as, like, her mobility goes. Uh, she has a blaster from her hand where she just shoots out blasts, but she, her alt fire is she launches basically, like, time sticky grenades. Um, and so using that, like, with Orissa's uh, pull, for anybody who doesn't know, Orissa launches, like, a, an orb that leashes to people in the area around it and then yanks them towards the center. Uh, and using that with her sticky bomb is really nasty. But probably one of the coolest things about her is she becomes an echo of other characters for her ultimate. And she can yeah, super... That's, that's what I was seeing was like yeah. her alt or her alternate uh, ultimate um, ability basically like breaks the game is what, you know, the, the headline said. Yeah, not necessarily because it lasts, I think, for like 12 seconds. And mm-hmm. if you know, if you are doing your ult tracking, like professional Overwatch League players do, you will know when Echo will likely have it. And so you're probably going to try to keep your tanks and some of your more damage-dealing characters out of line of sight to prevent her from being able to be utilizing it. It's going to be used a lot for, like, spacing-wise, but it's it's a really cool ability because... And, of course, they're going to nerf it real soon. I guarantee it. Um, there's no way they're launching her with it. Uh, they're going to probably shorten the time length but also at the same time increase her... Because she charges uh, her co- her Echo's super at the same time. And so some people are able to get off two or even three supers of like a D.Va or a DPS character. But a big one right now is Ryan flying up in the air and then air dropping your Ryan down. Like the Ryan Echo down. It's solid. But at the same time, other people can play Echo as well. Do the same thing. Uh, it's just like, it's nasty right now, but it's probably going to get nerfed. Uh, like they're going to tailor that nerfing they said specifically for Echo, they're going to keep her in the PTR for longer than the standard two weeks. Um, she'll probably be in there probably for about four or five weeks, I would estimate. Just to kind of like retool and balance her quite a bit. But uh, pretty much people are really liking her as far as like her regular like mechanics go as far as her mobility and her primary and alt firing. Um, like those seem pretty balanced well, like those are balanced pretty well. Um, it's just, uh, her ult will probably need to be retooled quite a bit, but that's it. Like, that's what I would say is like, that's the most like striking thing is cause she's doing something totally new in the game in a mechanic that has not existed before. 
Yeah. But and it's the uh, because uh, this is the last new character for a while while they focus on and work on Overwatch Two, right? So not going to get any any new other reveals. Uh, at least that's I would what, say I, I feel like that's what it was what what they were saying. Um, the character team is still going to be working on characters. Whether or not they're implemented before Overwatch Two or debut with Overwatch Two is up in the air, and that's with the back game development people more so. So like there's yeah. two there's okay. two distinct teams of that are part of the Overwatch team. One is um, character building and design. The other is actual, like, game building. So because Overwatch 2 is going to be a hybrid game where it's going to be a new game with a new engine, but at the same time be compatible with the old engine uh, from Overwatch 1 to let people just be able to not have to buy the new game just to keep up with it. Um, Which is an odd choice, like, bold choice, but an odd choice. Uh, I think eventually they'll shut off the, the Overwatch 1 servers, like maybe two or three years after Overwatch 2 comes out, after they've migrated everybody, but... I mean, that's uh, that's all... Uh, it, that's what I would guess it's all about, is, hey, we've got a huge player base and install base on, on Overwatch 1, we don't want to cut that off when if, if Overwatch 2 doesn't like strike the same bit of lightning that the first game did. And I think that's a big so. point to... I think that's a lesson Blizzard acted like Blizzard themselves learned from working with Bungie, with Destiny mm-hmm. to Destiny Two, like the the lack of like proper migrationary tactics, like pre thought out, um, definitely hurt Destiny Two a lot as far as its launch goes, um, and the lack of like just con like not not just content but also lack of diversity in equipment and items. Um, granted, that's totally out the window now where it's at you know three years later. But, um, like, Blizzard is being very careful not to make that same mistake uh, with Overwatch and Overwatch 2. Um, and the big thing is, I think, is that they're going to say is, like, you're going to get new looks in Overwatch 2 for a lot of these characters. Like, Genji has, like, a totally different look now. Instead of being, like, just a robot ninja, he now has, like, a hoodie and other stuff to kind of, like, make him look more like a person. Um, like, and I think that's... Yeah, they're also... I think they also recognize they're going into an incredibly different landscape than they did in 2016 um, with, with, as we just discussed, um, your Fortnites, your Apex Legends, your Call of Duty Battle Royales. Um, like, that is the world that um, Overwatch is stepping into, which, because Overwatch did, did, like, that probably came out right around the same time as, like, PUBG, or did that, that predated PUBG even, right? It predated PUBG. Yeah. So, so yeah, even the, so, I think that's the thing is that it's an arena shooter, but it's like you yeah. said, it predates PUBG, um, bringing the battle royale genre to like the what it is now. Um, Overwatch was known at the time of its launch for having really awesome, colorful, crazy skins, but that's been totally overshadowed by Fortnite and even Apex at this point. Yeah. Um, the diversity of Apex skins are nuts. So you have all of that going on, and then on top of that, you have. Um, Overwatch 2 needs to do be different. It needs to be different than... Because it's not going to become a Battle Royale game. And I think it's single-player mode from what people have said and what I've... Like, videos of people playing it that I've seen. Like, it's a solid single-player mode. It's definitely going to be, like, something that you, pl- like, play over and over again, but... And they're going to be putting out new content for it regularly as, like, updates and stuff about the story of Overwatch, which I think is great because I think Overwatch's story and lore is, like, one of the, like... It is one of the most underutilized things that you would not expect Blizzard to underutilize. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's, it yeah. seems like that's the kind of thing that, like, all the new character reveal trailers will be, like, worked into those kinds of updates, it would seem. Yeah. Make it part of the playable game instead of just a video on YouTube. And, yeah, it'll still be a video on YouTube, but also incorporated into, hey... You want to see the latest? Come back to the game and see it, you know, firsthand or something like that. Yeah, no, and also like the, um, I was watching a video of people were playing it. Um, it was uh, Brazil, and it was Overwatch team meeting Lucio for the first time, and like the cool dynamic of these characters that yeah you've been playing to like you've been playing them in the same game for you know four years, but then to in story wise seeing them interact for the first time is super cool um and it's that same level of experience you got when you had uh like when you put like when black watch came out for the first time and you've got to see how mccree and reaper used to be 
Um, and how Genji interacted with the Black Watch team when he's very different personality-wise than anybody else on the team. And that was super cool to see. Um, and you also got to see, like, what caused Reaper to turn away... Like, what caused the rift between Jack Morrison and Gabriel Rey as Soldier 76 Reaper. And seeing the story content, like, being able to actually be played out is going to be so cool. On top of the really cool mechanics they're going to be putting into the game with you know, upgrades and leveling, and so, like, they're taking, like, a little bit of Diablo with its seasonal content. They're saying, when you're playing through Overwatch, the single-player mode, or the co-op mode, you're going to be gaining levels. And so it brings in that aspect to it a lot as well, which is super cool. Um, yeah. But, so Echo is Echo's probably going to be the last standard debuting character. Um, that might not be the case. There might be, they might be bringing out, uh, like, character 35 or 36 later on. There's been rumors of that, that those are still in development and will be launched before Overwatch 2, but there's a lot of layover that, that could happen, hmm. especially with what's going on right now in, with the yeah. the pandemic. Um, speaking of what's going on right now, how's that impacted the Overwatch League itself? Dude, for, like, of course the season where Overwatch League had to say, like, home stands, like, home arena games are going to be the make it or break it, after five only five weeks, they have to cancel everything has been brutal. Um, at first, it was just the Chinese games, the Chinese homestands, uh, Chinese-hosted homestands. Then it was the Korean-hosted homestands as the situation in Korea got worse. And now it's all homestands worldwide after Paris was canceled. Um, they're still... So starting next week, uh, which is today is the 22nd of March. So the 29th of March, they will be doing homestands again. However... They will be broadcast only. Um, there will be no in-person audience, which will be weird because even from the beginning of Overwatch League, there was still at least like an in like in the stands audience, even though it was just at one arena. Um, so to see like a quiet Overwatch League is going to be weird. Like you're not going to hear the cheers and stuff. It's, it's going to be like the wrestling shows that are going these. Oh these yeah, last those, few weeks. those weird wrestling shows where like. Like, I don't know how... Like, they're doing WrestleMania without an audience this year, dude. And, like, I don't know how John Cena's supposed to have a match where, like, his calling is not going to be, like, shouted out to the rafters. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Very true. Um, like, it's it's interesting because... Well, I think yeah. that... One of the things I heard just on that front is that they're planning on recording it here in the next week. So they'll be able to edit all that stuff out if they really need to. That's so weird. It's This is going to be the weirdest WrestleMania ever. Which is cool, yeah. but also not great because like WrestleMania lives and like lives and breathes off of its like this is the biggest spectacle in wrestling. Yeah. And now they have to, they don't have any of that, and it's like oh we'll see how it goes, guys. You know. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> Too bad. But Overwatch suffering the same yeah, kind Overwatch of. Yeah, Overwatch is Overwatch League is definitely suffering that way. Um, They've had two weeks now where they weren't able to play any games. They'll be resuming games next week with uh, what would have been the uh, San Francisco homestand games, actually. Which, you know, friend of the show, Greg Miller, was going to be a host at. Like, he was going to be a featured guest at the San Francisco homestand. And it's not happening anymore, man. Like, we finally got Greg Miller into the Overwatch League, interest, like, at least cursorily interested. I... I I, I, I don't know if I'd go that far so much as like they invited him and he said, sure, I'll, I'll put myself out there in front of a new audience. I'm not going to understand anything that's going on, but you guys flew, flew uh, Andy out for the Dallas fuel stuff. Yeah, I'll do San Francisco. Well, that was the fuel. Them, so it's cool. Andy actually knows um, members of the envy envious organization. Um, Cause they've reached out, like they've reached out to each other and they talk. So yep. Envious, which is the or parent organization of the Dallas Fuel, flew Andy out. Greg was approached by the uh, San Francisco Shocks parent organization, NRG. And um, so, like, two different, very different circumstances. Overwatch League actually, like, the parent Overwatch League doesn't have anything to do with either Andy or Greg. Yeah. Um, that's so, like, but, I mean, that's where it gets into it, and that's where, like, kind of, like, the idea of, like, the sports mentality of, like, these different organizations are going and it's going to be really hard especially since this was the debut year of the call of duty league um 
like this, they're going to all be hit really hard by this, just like every other sporting thing. Yeah. I mean, just the world in general is being hit very hard right now. As I said, like I work for a symphony uh, yeah. and are like we're we've we've canceled performances for the next handful of weeks. Um, I mean, dude, uh, I work in we haven't yeah. canceled the full season yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if we do. Well, dude, I work in marketing and like yeah. the number of people I talk to, like right now they have me on like some back end training stuff. Um, when I'm like when I'm starting, like basically there were a bunch of us that they're like, Hey, we're going to just throw you in some training instead of like having you work from home, mm -hmm. um, for a variety of different reasons for a lot of different people. But, uh, from what I have understood and what I was seeing before I, I you know, was no longer making my calls to my clients and my advertisers is, uh, marketing is like, here's, here's the thing. If you want to be bullish in this, in this market right now, feel free, go bullish and like advertise. Because you are, especially on Facebook, uh, Facebook advertising right now is, like, like the oh, because of Facebook's algorithm, you have a better shot now because a lot of people have canceled their ads. Yeah. So. I mean, that's like all of our, we like yeah, we canceled all of our uh, social media ads and stuff. So it's like, don't don't drive people to buy tickets if we're going to end up having to cancel the show. Yeah, it makes <laughs> and, sense. Yeah. And call those people and say, hey, sorry. Sorry, we we're still selling you tickets, but we can't actually perform because the city like because it's not even like that we can't perform. It's that the city at this point has closed Symphony Hall and said no no gatherings in there through like early May. So, wah wah wah. I mean, that's the thing. It's happened everywhere. Like, yep. And that's and and the ramifications of this are going to be felt for a long long time. Oh Let's yeah. See how that all plays out. I mean, look what the, the then, government right now is trying to do, like prevent a recession right now. So it's crazy. Yeah. Yep. We will, we will see. Oh yeah. yeah so, goes, but, um, right. a good news though, next weekend, Overwatch league does resume. Uh, they will be doing it based off of, I believe like they're going to be in land centers. So they will all have like a relatively, really good, stable internet connection. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, this is nuts, man. This is yeah. Well, everything in the world right now is crazy, but this all are the teams still all going to be together, but yeah, just socially distanced. Uh, well, I mean, even with socially distanced, like the teams all live, like most of the teams live together. Okay. So, like, we're talking about a, a house filled with people who probably have roughly around anywhere from ten to twenty people living in it at any time. Like, they live in these larger homes that have like multiple rooms and stuff, but like. Mm -hmm. They like these people live, breathe, and train together. Like they are around. Well, I've, each other I've all seen the, the I've seen the Hundred Thieves campus. I get it. Yeah. I don't even uh, want to like. I dude. I don't even know how to even begin with Hundred Thieves because they are just such a. I shouldn't say that they're independent. Like they are independently owned by a small group of people, and they do not have the financial backing to make the big plays that they needed to to become part of the Call of Duty League. Which sucks because they're one of the they had one of the best Call of Duty teams. Just speaking esports in general, like it sucks that Hundred Thieves wasn't able to snag a spot in the Call of Duty League, but it it would have cost them twenty five million dollars, and they just weren't willing to pay that. So or able yeah. to. Cool. Uh, yeah, I, I've I've exhausted all of my knowledge of any of this kind of stuff. I'm I'm barely surprised. I'm I'm surprised I was able to barely hang on as long as I did there. <laughs> uh, um, so Overwatch League coming back next week, um, at least in some form or other. Uh, so yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this episode. Uh, thank you, Cameron, for joining me. Uh, we'll go around uh, make our plugs. You can follow Cameron at Rev Cabot. Anything you want to shout out, Cameron? Uh, yeah, this week uh, you will be seeing the remainder of my PAX articles. They're a bit late. My apologies. Uh, life has been insane. Yeah, life has been insane for all of us. Uh, you can follow me at Trevor J. Starkey. Uh, in addition to some PAX stuff, you can find my Ori and the Will of the Wisps review over at that nerdy site. Uh, and then also tomorrow, uh, check out the episode that Cameron and I just recorded prior to this on uh, that D-plus show talking about the TV show Gravity Falls on Disney+. Plus. Um, check that out uh, as well as here we're winding down we've got two weeks to go of uh, that ultimate video game list show season two uh, so we were ranking the top 10 games on that uh, uh, and it's been it has been a blast working with that crew of people so check out all of that stuff 
Uh, you can follow all of us over at That Nerdy Site and check out thatnerdysite.com for all the latest from the site, from any of us. If you liked what you heard, please rate, review, like, subscribe, and maybe even consider supporting us over on Patreon at patreon.com slash thatnerdysite. Every patron gets early access to a monthly bonus episode of this very show. Uh, the March early access episode is the uh, part two of PAX Memories that we did while we were in Boston with Cameron, uh, Frank, and Christian sharing their PAX memories, as well as Logan and I um, chiming in and adding a couple of our own as the follow-up to that episode. So uh, thank you again, Cameron, for joining me today, uh, doing a, a double header of podcasts with me. Uh, stay safe out there, stay healthy, and as always, stay nerdy and be good to each other. <laughs>